Hello my friend, today we're going to talk about functions, which is a very, very important concept in computer science. So very much like other languages you're used to, C as the concept of functions. You can think of a function as a black box magic that is taking some inputs and giving back a specific output. Of course, black box magic if you're using functions that you have not created, like for example, the printf. Right? You use the printf on a daily basis, but you don't know the actual underlying code. You just have an API. You know that you have to input a specific string with conversion specifiers, some inputs, and boom, you have in your terminal the actual string that you want. But the concept of a black box is a very good mental model. So functions can accept a variety of arguments and have a return value. So I can have functions with many inputs, even though arguably it's a very bad idea to have many inputs and have a single return value. We will see that with pointers, we can have functions that have more than one return value. Indeed, these functions are able to change data which is not locally available. So if you want pointers, allow me to get more than a single return value. Now, one important thing is that arguments and the return value types are pre-declared in C. Let's see a very simple function here that has all the ingredients to understand this concept. We have the function name plus one. The name of the function is very, very important because it has to be explicative. It has to explain me what is going on. Here I have plus one. So I immediately understand that this function is going to take one input, as I can see here, which is an integer, and it's going to return me back this input, this integer, plus one. This is the body of the function. You can see the curly braces that are delimiting this space. And this is the actual thing that the function is doing, is returning me back and plus one. This int is the return type. Indeed, I have the return of the integer plus one. Let's make a very simple example. First of all, I have to think about the return type. Well, in my case, I have an integer. Then what is the name of the function, which is an explicative one, plus one. In our case. Okay, so my function is gonna allegedly add one to what? Well, to the input, which in our case is an integer that I call n. Okay, now how to get this work done? What is the operation that you have to do? Well, you say n plus one, or you can also do with a prefix operator, plus plus n. And then of course you have to return this, right? Indeed, I'm returning an integer, which is n increased by one. Here you can see the return type. So this is a function. Now, you know that in C, we always start with the main function. So we do int main, here we're going to write void, we will see about that. And what do we do here? And we're going to print off uh, a specific digit, so percent %d for digit, new line. And we say plus one, and the number is going to be uh, 42. Very simple, right? Now, let's run this code. So like always, gcc, flag pedantic, warning all, warning extra. The standard is going to be C2x, and the input is going to be foo.c. Enter. Everything worked properly. Now we can launch our assembly.out. Enter. And we get 43. Easy vanilla, right? We get 42 plus 1. So to recap, the int before the plus indicates the return type. This integer here. The int n indicates that this function takes one int argument that is stored in parameter n. Now, what is the difference between argument and parameter? Well, the difference is kind of pedantic if you want. Indeed, the argument is often used in the sense of actual arguments versus formal parameters. To make it practical, here you have a function, right? A function foo. Now, what is this foo that you will find everywhere? These are basically placeholders. It's when you want to test out stuff. You call a function foo, you call a variable bar, whatever, right? So in this case, we have this foo function that takes two inputs, and these two inputs are formal parameters, right? So these are formally the parameters that the function has to take. In this other case, I have a function call, and I have foo, five, and z. And these five and z are the actual arguments. You see? Formal and actual. Formal parameter, int n actual argument, 42, formal parameter, actual argument. Now, they are often used interchangeably. So if you want to be pedantic, you know the difference, but at the end of the day, formal parameter, actual argument, you can uh, abstract it away with inputs, right? <laughs> 
Right. What's important to understand is that a parameter is a special type of local variable into which the arguments are copied. So very, very important idea, arguments are copied into the parameters. Lots of things in C are easier to understand if you know that the parameter is a copy of the argument, not the argument itself. This is very, very important. We will see this with pointers very well. Now, let me show you a very simple example. Here, I declare a variable n, or better, let's do foo bar bus variable, n is equal to 42. I print the value of this variable, then I call the function plus one, passing as an input foo bar bus, and then I print again the value. What is going to happen? What's your opinion? Let's compile and let's run. And as you can see, I get two times 42. That's exactly this point. Arguments are copied into the parameters. As you can see, when I increase n here, I'm not increasing foobar buzz here. I'm just increasing a copy of foobar buzz. We will see this later. Here you can see the main function in which I declare an integer i, assign the value 10 to that, and another integer j. Then I say j is equal to plus one i, right? This is a call to the function plus one. And then I'm gonna print i plus one is percent d conversion specifier and I pass as an input j. So try to run this code by yourself and see what is going on. Now, one important thing is that the function definition has to happen before the function is used. If you don't do that, the compiler is gonna complain and it's gonna tell us that it doesn't know the actual function. The best way to do that is with prototypes. Let me show you what this line means. So I'm gonna delete this from here and I'm gonna pass just beneath the main function, like that. I will compile this, and as you can see, it's gonna tell me implicit declaration of function p. Basically, the compiler doesn't know where this plus one is coming from. One thing I can do is simply copy the prototype, which is basically just the function API, in which I have the function name, the return type, and the input, that's it. If I do that, I can compile and I can launch with no problems. Now also notice that main is a function itself, of course, and that it returns an integer. Now here, as you can see, I didn't return anything because the main function is a special one and the operating system, when I don't have here a return value like that, is gonna do this by itself. But here, basically when I return zero, uh, this is a return value I can see here at the level of the shell. If I compile and run again, then I can do echo status. This works in fish shell and I get zero, right? This is the return value of the main. Here, if I do 42, I launch again and I do echo status. You can see that I get 42. And this is a functionality that I also have embedded in my fish. If you are in bash, you can do dollar question. Of course, this is shell dependent. Now, what's that void thing in main? Well, this is just a keyword that's used to indicate that the function accepts no arguments. Indeed, here you see this void, right? Sometimes you can also see the main function takes int an argument counter and char star argument vector, like that, arg v. You can also write like that. We will see about this stuff. You can also have the same char environment variables in this fashion. So the main function is kind of peculiar in this sense. Here, when I say void, or when I don't see anything, essentially, it simply means that the main function is not taking anything as a name. Let's have a look at this program. I have the main function that is calling foo. Foo is defined here. It's a function that is not returning anything, as I can see from the void, and take it as an input, nothing, right? Again, I have void here. The function is simply printing foo. But here I call foo with some inputs. Here I have a string, an integer, and here I have a double. I have also here the function bar that takes the same inputs, but in the function implementation, I don't have a void here. So what is the difference? Compiling this code, I get that foo is taking too many arguments, but I don't get the same mistake for bar. So let's try to remove only the input from foo. And let's compile this again, boom. As you can see, this time everything worked. I got the compilation 
that worked properly so I can actually launch this and I get full and bar. So what's going on? Here the function takes no inputs. Here on the contrary bar takes an unknown number of inputs. As you can see here we have three inputs. So this void makes the code more readable and it's going to help the compiler to understand how the function really works. Now to the glory details. This idea that emptiness means unknown number of inputs is valid only with standards from C17 and older. To be clear, this compiles, if I do std C17, right, works properly. Or if I do C99, same thing. But if I do C2x standard, this time I will get a mistake. This is going to tell me too many arguments to function bar. So in the new standard, when I don't have void, this does not mean unspecified number of inputs. This simply means the function doesn't take anything. From wiki, we get all the new features of the standard. So functions with no arguments listed in the prototype, like void foo, are understood as taking no arguments. So TLDR always use void, even though the last standard doesn't quite require that. It makes the code more correct and more readable.